Well, a new report estimates nearly half the rebels fighting in Syria are jihadists or hardcore Islamists. Senior international correspondent Nick Robertson is following this for us and he joins us live from Beirut, Lebanon. And Nick, uh, these numbers are really quite uh, worrying, aren't they, when you consider Western nations are looking at uh, providing weapons to some of these rebels? As they indeed are, the United States is providing light weapons to some of the rebels. About 25,000 uh, of the rebels are believed to be purely secular or nationalist. Um, about 10,000 hardcore um, supporters of Al-Qaeda, allied with Al-Qaeda in one way or another. And a middle ground between the two that shaded uh, or full of about a... 100,000 fighters and has shaded various ways between the two. It's often hard to make out who is who as alliances change on the battlefield. But the overall trend that this analysis has picked up is one that is very worrying, a drift towards the extremists. Under pressure by al-Qaeda to recite verses from the Quran, she breaks down. Odd as it may appear, these radical rebels, known as ISIL, the Islamic State of Iraq and Levant, are using events like this to win hearts and minds. Elsewhere, another al-Qaeda-related rebel group, al-Nusra, delivers humanitarian aid. Increasingly in Syria, hardcore Islamists like these are using outreach to convert moderate Syrians to their extremist views. In a study of Syria's rebel groups by respected military analyst Jane's Defense titled Syria's Insurgent Landscape, the strength of Islamist groups sympathetic to al-Qaeda, like al-Nusra, appears to be growing. A view supported by this former CIA officer who tracked al-Qaeda in Iraq. Nusra has found the sweet spot for terrorism and how al-Qaeda is, is evolving. The Jane's defense analysis estimates approximately 1,000 different rebel groups, close to 100,000 fighters, as many as half with radical leanings, according to other experts. According to Jane's, al-Qaeda's closest allies, ISIL and al-Nusra, total about 10,000 fighters. Many veterans of al-Qaeda in Iraq they're experienced and well-skilled. Of the others, close to 35,000 are estimated to be hardcore Islamists who share some of al-Qaeda's views. About 30,000 are more moderate Islamists and only 25,000 are estimated to be purely secular or nationalist. And it's these moderates who are losing ground. Alwia Afal al-Rasul, as many as 9,000 fighters and US-backed, also helps Western intelligence agencies, according to Jane's. Recently beaten by al-Qaeda for control of Raqqa, a key central city. A worrying trend for analysts like Bakos as rebels draw recruits from Europe and beyond. This is an ideology. This isn't just about the safe haven in Syria, but it's about the fact that they've been able to attract so many Western recruits in this conflict that this still poses a threat to the United States and to Western power. In Raqqa, now under almost complete al-Qaeda control, crowds flock to see a cold-blooded execution of men rebels claim support the regime. A trend that shows no signs of reversing and puts U.S. allied rebels at a disadvantage. Well, with battlefield alliances shifting, it's sometimes hard to sort of put on the map precisely where the Islamists have more control of all the rebels. But, but it's broadly understood that the sort of harder core Islamists really have stronger control in the north of the country around Aleppo, um, not as strong around Damascus and Homs and Hama in the center. And really at the moment in the south, they're really trying to gain a foothold. It is an evolving picture. But as we've seen there from that analysis, it's one that is worrying uh, Western experts right now, Rosemary. Yeah, and quite understandably so. Uh, so, Nick, how difficult is it to, to track and the, the flow of these uh, Western-supplied uh, arms to rebels there in Syria and to find out where they're actually ending up? And the numbers, too, involved here. Well... 
Well, the, the intelligence agencies in, involved who are sort of vetting uh, the different groups that these weapons go to uh, are as much on the ground as they can be, as much in touch with these groups as they can be. Um, and the understanding is that they hand these weapons over to these groups for their sole use. Um, but one uh, regional intelligence uh, expert I was talking to said that they've even noticed a flow of weapons that have been supplied to the rebels coming back out of Syria, being sold on the open market in neighboring countries just to make money. The reality is on the ground, and certainly the Western governments recognize this, is it's very hard to control where those weapons finally end up. Battlefield alliances change. Weapons in the hand of one group one day can be shared on the battlefield another day and taken away from that group even by more extremists later. Rosemary? Mm, a lot of concerns there. Nick Robertson reporting from Beirut in Lebanon. Thank you for that.